But I can hit the button now. And uh, if you guys happen to hear noise in the background, let's see, where's the button? There's that button. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, that one, that one right there. Briar Rose is uh, up and at them, as they say. Uh, we are now officially in crazy time, I believe. Uh, that, would, that would be the behavior that is being displayed anyway. And let's see. So uh, once again, back on a Friday night, opening up the phone lines here at Liberty Radio. I am the Drizzle. It is December 1st, 2023. Uh, we actually have the High Yona on hold at the moment. Why does my level seem so low? Hmm. Take a look at the pertinent numbers here. Yeah, there's plenty of gain on that. Uh, maybe I need to back off. Back off and straighten up. Yeah, that seems to work a little bit better. Anyway. So the phone lines are open. The link to the Zoom chat room is in the Liberty Radio Telegram channel. Uh, and I believe the quick way to get there is T as in Thomas dot M E M as in Mary E as in Evan. I don't know. Uh, slash forward slash GTW Liberty radio. And that should take you right to the telegram channel. It's open to the public as uh, open lines is as well. You can call in. And uh, let us know pretty much whatever is on your mind. There is no censorship here at Liberty Radio. Uh, at least not the first time. Uh, once you show your ass, then, then we might start uh, putting some sort of provisions in place. But the phone lines are currently open for you to call in and talk about whatever is on your mind. You know me, I don't plan anything for Friday nights. Uh, I come into Friday nights with a completely blank slate. There is uh, nothing that I have on the agenda for this evening. This is, no, this is about you guys. This is about you getting to be part of uh, the greatest pirate radio station broadcasting from the Piney Woods of East Texas. So it's your time to shine. It's not about me on Friday nights. It's about you. Uh, so give us a call. Let us know what's on your mind. Anyway, the Yona is out running uh, an errand. Uh, I think he might be saving a baby from a flaming building. Um, early reports are uh, sketchy at best, but we'll, uh, we'll make sure to ask Yona about it. Uh, once he does arrive, hopefully all in one piece, and uh, as we understand him to be most of the time. Let's see. Uh, there's weird stuff going on. Weird stuff going on with the coronal mass ejections that have been transiting uh, through our, you know, whatever, whatever we occupy here, whatever this is. Uh, you, you guys actually believe any of that, that there were ejections from the sun that were uh, coming down to earth and possibly changing people's behavior and all that fun sort of stuff? Call in. Call in and let us know what you think about all of that. All right. So, since it looks like most of you are bashful this evening, and I don't have anything scripted for the next two hours, and we're waiting on Yona to get back, because again, you know, Yona is uh, going to supply entertainment wherever he goes you don't have to worry about that 
since we're waiting on Yona, let's see. Ah, fuck Twitter. Let's go here instead. I got something I've been wanting to check out. Ah, oh, damn it. I did the wrong thing there. Got something I've been wanting to check out on the YouTubes. So I figured, why don't we go ahead and get that knocked out really quick here at the beginning. It's only about 15 minutes long, and you never know. Uh, you might actually learn something as well. Uh, let's see. Let's go. Okay, we already got all of that queued up and ready to go. Let's just head on over. I silenced the wrong one. Plato said that a country is best ruled when the best persons rule. The uh, human being is best governed when the best part of himself leads. Now, some think the mind is the best part, others the emotion, some the physical body itself with its resources. But all of these finally come under the leadership of that which dwells within the body, within the emotions, behind the mind. What is this basis of reality? How are we going to reach it? How are we going to challenge it to come out of its strange aloofness so that it can become available to the person? One thing we find out immediately is that this search has to be personal. There is no possibility of communicating this reality in ways necessary to solve the problem of the individual, except that it be given to the individual with his particular problem. So we have to try to find out how to reach the opening of the inner light so that something superior to mind can become the ruler of mind and use the mind, the emotions, and the body as an instrument for the fulfillment of a sacred purpose. This we have to try to discover in one way or another. In ancient times, there were various doctrines that were developed very largely for the purpose of bringing the individual into contact with his own higher nature that there were teachings that taught him to rise above the, even the highest aspects of his own mind into an immediate and intimate experience of reality. One of the first things that we are told in ancient scriptures is the simple line, be still and know that I am God. Now, I think perhaps this is one of the most important statements in connection with man's religious life. The problem of trying to be still now, when we think of still, if we are bound to material things, we will simply say that the individual does nothing. That is not the answer. That is not what is intended. Intended only to become part of worship. When the individual seeks the ordinary, he can read a school book or attend a class. When he seeks to know the mystery of his own inner self, he cannot storm the gates of heaven. If he tries to get into the sheepfold, which was the old name for religion, by any way except the proper gate he is then a thief and a robber therefore the ethics the morality the integrities involved have to be kept in mind at all times to be still to the mystic means to be free from the involvements of mind and emotion and free also from various physical symptomologies that may arise in order that he will be permit that which is truly the over-self to be heard. The still voice, the small voice, comes to the individual who stops talking long enough to hear it. And that is very rare, even in religion. The problem always is that we are trying desperately to decide for ourselves, on mental, emotional, and physical levels, those problems decisions which can come only from something superior to what we now use. We have to some way break into that mysterious realm that has been called intuition or the extrasensory band. To be still now for us in this particular world in which we now live, it seems to me is to cease doing that which is not necessary, not right, and not good. The individual must choose sometime to clearly face the fact that he cannot be right 
if he continues to act wrong. That there is a, a relationship between conduct and consciousness. There is a relationship between our material personality and that mysterious locked over self which we are seeking to understand. Therefore, it is very necessary to be still in the sense of recovering from all of those intemperances of attitudes by means of which the normal growth of the consciousness is delayed or disposed of entirely. Therefore, if we want to really understand this, we have to begin the process of ironing out ourselves to get rid of those things which interfere with the natural mistakes of life. I mentioned that one day to a man who came to me that if he stopped all these various attitudes that he had, he'd be better off. And he seemed quite unhappy and a little indignant. Well, he said, if I stop thinking about all these mistakes, I'll have nothing at all to think about. <laughs> well, that probably is true. But it's possible to imagine that there might be some things to think about that are not mistakes, if we give any ground for such thinking. If we are willing to gradually iron out the impulses and intemperances with which we have burdened ourselves for thousands of years and brought with us in any sequence of rebirth that happens to us. Supposing we say that uh, the individual who wants to get better is trying to grow because the present condition has become intolerable. The person is not satisfied as he is. He is not satisfied in what he has been. But he does not know how to carry himself into the future without dragging this rubble with him. His tomorrow is just another day in which to worry about the problems of yesterday. This whole problem of the cont continuity of a compound attitude has to be broken up in some way. The person has to be able to be quiet without unhappy thoughts coming. He must be able to be relaxed and think without thinking destructively, critically, or in some way detrimental to all concern. And if his thinking is so bad he can't stand it, he has got to learn to get over the instinct to take a drink or something and forget himself. The individual trying to forget himself is really telling us he's trying to forget a personality that is impossible. And there's no way of getting away with it except by outgrowing it. Now, some have undoubtedly have been able to drink themselves to death and hope that by this means that they have accomplished everything that was necessary. While they, people, these people belong and believe in the, scent, in the kind of life that we are generally living, they will feel they have got release. But to the deeper thinker, they have solved nothing and have escaped nothing. So that the problem becomes again, cure it now rather than face it later. So in the problem of getting started on this inner search, we have to try to find out that nature in its own way, our natural compound is essentially cooperative. The body with all its natural functions is really a pretty good creature considering everything. It has laws and rules which if we keep them, it will keep us as long as possible. It also has rules that we cannot break. And the moment we begin to reject our responsibility to the body, we're in trouble. We get so interested in what we're doing mentally and emotionally that we wreck the body. And because we have wrecked the body in accomplishing a large personal fortune, we then feel that the wreckage was worthwhile, but it isn't. Actually, therefore, the first laws that man faces are obvious to himself. He faces them in his daily living, but he has learned to carefully ignore the findings. He also has developed a new escape, which our ancestors really didn't have. Namely, that if he couldn't get out of the trouble himself, he could hire someone else to get out of it for him. But it's just as difficult to have another person solve your problems as to have another person eat your food and you be nourished by it. You can't do these things. So we have now the complex situation of people who want to grow, but have already stunted their own growth badly. They want to be better, but they do not know what to do with the mistakes that have accumulated. I think the old mystics had the perfect answer for it. They simply said, be quiet and know that I am God. Now, this wasn't a theological type of definition. It is a definition based upon the concept that when we cease 
to build our own mistakes, when we cease to fashion a giant monster out of our own intemperances and relax, all of these evil things simply fade away for lack of nutrition. But they will not fade as long as one drop of nutriment is available to them. As long as we continue to have unhappy attitudes, we are not going to solve the mystery of our own inner consciousness. Actually, the way of life physically that gives us the maximum probability for years is the same type of discipline as that which is necessary to the mind and the emotions so that they will fulfill their duties as perfectly as possible. When the emotions are quieted down to simple, gentle, real values, the emotional nature is protected. We have no likelihood of trouble with some of the internal organs of the, uh, the endocrine system which have particular control over our emotional content. We will not kill ourselves by false feelings any more than we will kill ourselves with bad food. When we go up again uh, to the third one, we have the mind. If the mind is used as it was intended to be used, and that is for the common good, for the advancement of everything that is real and valuable in life, if the mind could be released from the terrific pressure of self-interest, if it could get away from all its scheming on how to defeat a brother, and rather simply, quietly work out how to help him, all things would be much better in the mental world, there would be much less mental breakdown, and we would not be suffering from too many cases of senility. It is the misuse of the mind that gradually changes life into a dismal uh, uh, dwelling for the individual. So in each of these levels, there is a natural law. Each of these creatures has its rights and privileges. Each level of ourselves has its inalienable needs and corrections. They're all here if we want to use them. Now, a lot of people have uh, been perfectly willing to support religions industriously. They have been willing to make pilgrimage. They have been willing to do all kinds of penances uh, to remove some guilt mechanisms within themselves. And at the same time, even though they live a pretty fair life, this great experience of projection into something higher has not occurred to them. And largely, it's a result of not being able to quiet the separate levels of our consciousness on their own levels and then quiet the relationships of them to each other. In other words, if the mind and emotions are locked in conflict, they're in trouble. Wherever there is conflict, there is a kind of destruction. There is a false motion. Wherever there is an obstruction, there is a decay of values, a disintegration, an infection in which something becomes sick. All selfishness is sickness, no matter what you want to call it. All jealousy is sickness. These things are just exactly as serious as sicknesses as are the ordinary physical ailments which we may or may not be able to cure. This problem, therefore, is to get rid of the sickness arising from the misuse of powers, faculties, and principles within ourselves. Unless we're able to do this, we're going to stay right in trouble just the way we are. But the worst part of it is, we may be a good church member while we're in this problem. It has never occurred to us that religion demanded anything more of us than allegiance. It was like a parent who demanded that the child obey, but did not necessarily uh, contribute to any enlightenment in the purposes of obedience. The, uh, the religious association which washes away sins with baptismal water has not gotten to the point where it realizes, or that people realize, that they have got to wash their own sins away all too often with their own tears. So there is time to get at some of these values directly. If the person wants to be born again in the theological sense of the word, it isn't that he simply accepts a religion. To be born again means to not make the same mistakes again. It means to clear the slate. A new birth means to start out with a fresh, clean, honest mind, without carrying anything from the past. Everything that is detrimental must be left aside. Now, out of this is something more, though, than just keeping the morality straight. It is part of this business of being quiet. Every agitation, every intensity of negative attitude is dangerous to the inner life of the person.
I think that's the end of it. Yeah, that's usually when that stuff comes up. Uh, but again, after school, bringing us the wise words of Manly Palmer Hall, 33rd degree Freemason, historian, and uh, from all accounts, all around weird dude, uh, but very very highly intelligent and uh, very eloquent as uh, we could see or hear, uh, I should say. Uh, probably not a good time for my synesthesia to kick in. Uh, but yes, uh, very well spoken, um, obviously, from a prepared speech that he had made at some point, uh, but very artfully delivered and uh, very striking in its poignancy for COVID land, isn't it? I don't know. What do you think, Yona? <laughs> you got to hear most of that, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, you know, I literally caught the very beginning of the manly man presentation um manly i gotta say that that's a very that's that's such a masculine name it, it's almost uh toxic masculinity i guess um because you know words are so violent these days <laughs> um but you know uh dead fella and i have been talking constantly back and forth about this very subject of uh frequency and vibration and the plasma and the ether and you know just really getting deeper and deeper into this higher plane of existence um and uh was talking about it at length today transcending the humanity uh rejecting the anthropomorphism and embracing zoomorphism hmm. um Tell me more Which, about uh, that. Well, uh, to, to break it down into layman's terms for the hoi polloi's out there, um, anthropomorphism is when you try to imbue uh, w w human characteristics right. within everything else around you. All right. of you know, whether we're talking animate or inanimate objects, animals, buildings, yeah. whatever. Easiest, um, easiest quick definition I've ever found for it is ascribing human characteristics to something non-human. Yep. Exactly. Whereas zoomorphism would be uh, attributing animal characteristics in humans. So like, for example, call it okay. a lizard part, a lizard part of the brain. Right. Uh, or, you know, other uh, animalistic uh, instincts and attributes of the human animal, uh, like the propensity to urinate and defecate, because um, poop. Um, you know, but there's more that, that, that binds us with the rest of uh, the living world out there besides our ability to excrete, I, I do admit. Um, uh, well, everything has to eat. Yeah. And, and as uh, the Reverend Jim Baker so famously said from his, um, I'm going to call it a command and control nodule on the Lake of the Ozarks in Branson, Missouri, um, mm -hmm. praise the Lord. Uh, it was the Reverend Jim Baker who said, you know, you got all these buckets of eggs, which double <laughs> as latrines because, you know, <laughs> What are you going to do oh, shit. with the doo-doo? Yeah. What are you going to shovel it with? Yeah. Did, right? Did you happen you to hear that shit? Did you hear the song that that brought us in to open lines? The the last song that played? Yes. So you, you yeah. Yeah. Rich tapestry. Yeah, that, rich that, fucking that picks, tapestry. That picks right up on it. Um, it's a rich tapestry like Tavis Ball talking about Tavis Doc on PSB. Or PBS. Can I offer you an egg in these trying times? Wow. 
And and who can't forget Charlie Rose, especially all those um, harassed women. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> too soon. How many, it's wait, too soon. how many? Uh, how how many women did he get accused by? Uh, was it more than two? Yes. Oh wow! Yes. Tur- wow. Turns out wow. Charlie Rose was a Charlie serial- Rose was a horn dog. Serial habitual. Um, well, how best to put this? Um, he was very hands on and one of the only ones that was that that hands on on the field. Um, kind of like a goalie in soccer. Anyways, um, right? Because no one else was allowed. No one else was that. allowed to use their hands, but Charlie was. Uh, yeah. Okay. And and real hands because yeah. he, he's all, he's all over that net. He's catching it. Anyway. Hey, you want to work in the studio or not? That's yeah. Probably trying to he, pick up that seven ten split, I would imagine. I mean, I do know that he liked to call them toots, which anytime anytime you, you refer to um the help, the female help is toots. <laughs> oh yeah. You, you you've turned left off of sexy and right into uh, um creep cul de sac. But anyway. No. Yeah, I'm I'm told they don't like the the there's not a great affection for uh that particular nomenclature. But you know, you could make something Search it out up. Of it. If you call her Queen Toots, then you're kind of making it Egyptian, right? Hey, Queen Wasn't Toots. that wouldn't that be kind of like a backhanded slap? It is. Yeah. But it's punny in a Yona sort of yeah, there right. you go, Queen Tuts. And, and and she's so flat, I, I should call her never titty. But anyways, um uh <laughs> I got more Egyptian jokes. Oh that that, that pun was for L B. The never titty. Yeah. Never titty was for, for L B. That, that's his Egyptian pun of the night. I just we're gonna, we're, I thought we're maybe we were going to the Taylor Swift jokes already. Uh I haven't Shout heard out Zena Taylor. LeBay. I haven't heard Taylor Swift go gangster rap mm. yet. Yet. Nah, it'll probably be like her first AI crossover. I would imagine. Yes. Uh, Taylor Swift will go uh, full G. I mean, who can forget when? Um, it'll be Christina Taylor Swift, Aguilera, Andrew Remember when Tate. Christina- and DJ I uh, Robot. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it'll be That's, a triple crossover. And what blow about people's Indiana? minds? You got to get Anna Indiana on there. Oh, f- fuck that bitch! <laughs> no talent. <laughs> hack. I want to hear. But Twenty years from now, Anna Indiana is still going to be trying to like hawk her greatest hits on fucking infomercials at two a.m., and she'll still suck. Now I that's what first. I I was doing it from the beginning. Now that's what I call AI music. Fifteen with <laughs> right? Anna Indiana. Right. Um. Uh, but you know, I want to load see- it straight into your Neuralink today. Taylor Swift has got to go the full 180 like Christina Aguilera did as soon as she got rid of the Mickey Mouse ears. Yeah. And then, I want to get dirty. Right. And she did the video oh, with yeah, Red yeah. Band. And, and, and everyone was like, oh my <laughs> God. Because it was, yeah. it was like she had to outdo Britney and be even more slutty and over the top. It was kind of, it right. kind of felt like Britney, bitch. And Christina Agurgalera, like they were having a, a slut off. All right. So, all right. Thing. Here's what I think. In terms of be, the video choreography and direction. Right. Yeah. Well, here's, here because you know, they got the, the whole uh, marketing campaign running right now where it's supposed to be like uh, Taylor Swift and the dude from the Kansas City Chiefs that everybody hates uh, are right. dating each other, right? Like that's what the people are supposed to believe. And right. I believe, I believe she's actually set to play uh, in the halftime at uh, the Super Bowl this year when when the two teams get together uh, and they uh, they do the script on the field. 
you know, that whole thing in the, like the first week of February, I believe. Superb you know, does, owl. Anyway, it makes so, it makes perfect sense they'll be a happy couple because right. she's into anal and he's used to bending down and taking it from behind. Exactly. But, but, exactly. Well, anyway. yeah, he's a tight end. Anyway. That's right. Um, That's right. <laughs> so so he goes out like the chiefs the chiefs are in the super bowl right obviously because that's what's in the script um but he goes out at at the end of her halftime show right i think it's uh somebody it was i think media monarchy was talking about it earlier this week got it into my head he goes out at the end of the halftime show, gets on his knee, proposes to her on stage in front of, you know, however many million people actually still watch sports ball. Um, God, I hope she said no. Well, no, she, she has to say yes. It's because it's in the script. Oh! Right? It's in the script. She says yes, right? Because it's a storybook, right? You oh! got to give the people hope, right? So, right. Yeah. I don't know, like... I, what's a month after the the superb owl like what what happens in march that's like a big event that could also then serve as the stage for the wedding of uh t swizzle and the pfizer poster boy well wasn't it william shakespeare himself who said beware the ides of march yeah but like what what's uh, what would have millions of people watching anyway where you could like just go ahead and throw this on top of it in march march madness ncaa's okay. all right fine whatever all right so then they get married right they don't get that they don't get that many viewers with ncaa though but well, it's fine the, the happy couple the happy couple is honeymooning at the fucking final four i don't know whatever it People will believe anything yeah, these days. It doesn't fucking yeah. matter. Anyway, anyway. I can on, see at the final on. four, yeah. Yeah, yeah, all right. So okay, then, I'll, I'll concede that then, All right, <laughs> six months after that, so that would put us into like October, November of next year, right around election time, all right? So yes, this would be yes. good timing, good timing. And she's they split up. No. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't matter. They split up. Right. And like as soon as uh, they split. Tay Tay goes like total slut turn. Right. She becomes yes. like uh, Nicki Minaj and uh, fucking Madonna and like just all the whores of Babylon all rolled up in one. But right? maybe more, maybe more coughing up black ink like a Billie Eilish. Whatever. Video sure. Yeah. 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 More black leather, um, please. Who knows what the aesthetic will be by then? You know? Better yet, red leather. Let's please say it together, you naughty thing. Anyways, go ahead. Yeah. Well, no, that's how you do it. And that way you string it out over the course of a whole year. Because, again, she's still touring right now. She's still trying to fill stadiums and all of that shit. So it makes perfect business sense. It's just good marketing. Wow, this is going to be a beautiful journey to you know, say Even with people with dropping Taylor. dead at her concerts. Any publicity I, I can't, is good publicity. I just can't think of anybody else I would rather go to Satan with than taste with. Anyways, um, oh boy. Well, I'm told I, I'm told that her father was a close personal friend. So. All right, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna stick my neck out here, Drizzle. I'm gonna make a bold prediction. Today is the first day of December, in the year of our Lord, 2023. You are correct, sir. And my prediction is. Taylor Swift, I'm sorry, slut Taylor Swift is going to be doing a track with, it's lit, Travis Scott. Really? Huh. It's going to happen. Not Little Nas nice X. But he might be on there too on the remix. I thought Not he rolling was that out. favorite. Not rolling that out. But she's going to jump in. I mean, he on- had the shoes. I'm telling you, man. And, and if she does, if she ends up in that video wearing red leather, that's like not only calling it, that's like calling a fucking halftime buzzer beating fucking half court shot before the game. Saying, I'm going to steal the ball right before halftime, run to the half court line, right as buzzer, bam, nail that shit. And, well, and, and I mean, I just happens. laid it out for everybody. 
If like that all they have to do is just hit rewind yeah. and go yeah. back about five minutes. And, and I just, just laid out the whole fucking script for them. Follow the, all you got to do is just band. wait. That's it. He just did it in chronological order. Explain yeah. it very simply for you there. And that's why it's fried day. Hmm. All day. Fried day. For a couple and more fried hours, night. Yeah. yeah. And fried night. Yeah, not fired night. Like Sam Altman. Fired from his own company. Hmm. Wow. That's gotta suck, right? <laughs> hey, anybody up for some Papa John's? <laughs> oh, oh, too soon. <laughs> too soon. Too soon. <laughs> That's how I Shaq took over. That's it's, right. It's like it's as easy as sinking a free throw, Shaq. I'm telling you. Did anything important actually happen in the world today? I didn't. I didn't see anything. I saw that uh, apparently uh, head of the Federal Reserve, uh, old Jay Peasy, he made some sort of statement somewhere about something. I don't think any like action was taken or anything, but uh, apparently markets were all jitty. Uh, after he was done talking, for some reason, I don't know why. They might as well call them the boring rates because I'm never interested in those stories. Yeah. Federal Reserve, Federal Reserve. I mean, they're as federal as Federal Express or Fed Eps. Am I right? I mean, it's not even part of the government yet. They pretty much run. Well, they the run the government. And, yeah. And and they loan all the money to the government with interest, yeah. hence the need for the income tax. And so we began with the. Con- the, well, the, that's the how central from, banking works, you know. yeah. So anyways, J.P. Morgan had everybody down to Jekyll Island. It's the creature from 1913. And so here we are. I, I just kind of fast forward on hmm. Forex. But that basically, go back to Jekyll Island. You'll see where it's, that's in Georgia. But I'm saying that, that was like the the biggest thing that caught my attention today. I don't know. I think I put some other stuff in the Telegram And you know channel. who one of the main hosts? Oh, and by the way, the link the, to this Zoom call is in the Telegram channel, so you guys can can call in and chat with us. Bueno. Jump yeah. right in. Um, but uh, the, really, the mover and shaker that coordinated and got everybody to the meeting and really made sure it happened was Henry Flagler right-hand man of John D. Rockefeller. Uh, when we're talking about the Jekyll Island meeting. Yeah. And of course, Henry Flagler is the one that built the Royal Point Siena and built the Mar-a-Lago where uh, the Trumpy Trump is at there in uh, oh, really? beautiful Boca, Florida on the A1A and U.S. Highway 1. I was not aware of that. Right down the Florida East Coast. Because Henry Flagler ended up taking over the runnings of the Standard Oil Company. Because Rockefeller retired and and then the Seven Sisters was broken up. Which is, turns out that's the article I'm now actually picking up and writing again. Uh, that's the third or fourth installment or whatever it is of the Devil Pill Rockefeller series. As uh, Painfully, slowly, I'm connecting people from Devil Bill Rockefeller to the modern flaming dumpster being carried away in a New York City flood right mm. down the middle of Fifth Avenue um, that we're living in right now. Yeah, that was a, that was a very long metaphor. I apologize. That's fine, dude. I found uh, a clip, a four minute clip of David Rockefeller when he was giving a speech somewhere. I don't know where it was in 1994. And he basically lays out the whole plan in that four minutes. Nice. It is amazing. I don't know. I don't think it made the playlist tomorrow night, but it went in the vault. So it'll play at some point. Well, we should definitely play that to celebrate the completion of the Rockefeller series in the manufacturingreality.org vault there on the interwebs, because uh, that is going to be quite the um, masterpiece, quite the 
hors d'oeuvre, as my froggy Frenchies would say, um, for any casual reader to stumble upon and then peruse through. Because I, I tried to make each installment more reader friendly with, you know, lots of breaks between smaller paragraphs, and lots of pictures and stuff like that, you know. So it's not just some dry fucking, um, what do they call it? Substack or whatever. Right. You know. Is that still, I, like, is that still a thing? I guess. You know, I have a Substack. I just never really you used do? it. Yeah. How does it work? You just post shit on there and then people can pay to read your shit. Why would anyone do that? I mean, you know, you could find out what I think, but pay me first, bitch. Fuck you. Eh. I mean, it's kind of aggressive though, isn't it? Substack. Like what if what if what if what you think is dog shit? And then I had paid you I paid you five bucks for dog shit. Oh, uh, that That's reminds right. me. Um there there is That's a refund. That's like caveat emptor, man. Fuck that. that. To be fair, there is a, 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 a refund policy on Substack. There is no refunds. Again, refer to part one about the fuck you. Yeah. I'm good. I'll I'll stick with value for value. I think uh, Adam yeah. Curry was on to something. You know, and when I'm I not saw just saying that because Mike the polymath is going to meet him on Monday. When I saw that, that's why I was like, well, there's no point in putting anything, anything up here. And it's the same thing with, um, you know, the flirtations with Rockman about being a creator on there. Yeah. Because, you know, when I finally stopped giving a fuck, then all of a sudden they fucking approach. Uh, and like, well, if you're interested, you'll need to do this and this and this. And I start reading through everything. And I was like, uh, that seems like a lot to commit to this relationship. Rock hmm. band, when I don't know if the viewers are really there. It seems like Odyssey is really where it's at when it comes to pulling in major clusters of viewers. Obviously. Uh. I don't know. I think it depends on your on your content. I think right. most platforms nowadays are becoming content specific. In other words, you need to fall within certain parameters in order for the algorithm to allow you to play in the the greater playground uh, that is the platform. Oh. Uh, yeah. It's that shadow vanity type stuff. Correct. Oh. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I keep forgetting about all the censorship. I get so high and mighty and full of truth. I fact a tooth <laughs> and I, I just forget everything that, you know, all the fuckery and, and dumb shit. Uh, but then I'm, I'm brought back down to earth. Like when I went to Walmart earlier to buy a lock. Oh no. And, um, Again, about one out of ten, one out of eight are uh, Don't say in it. the foot in the Foot Clan. They're 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 working with Master Shredder, and you can <laughs> tell they are against the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles because they're all wearing the fucking Master Shredder. Oh my face god, face. are we going to do this oh, shit man. again? Are we seriously going to do this shit again? I don't want to do lockdowns again, man. It's, I, is that going to work? I won't. Again? I mean, I didn't really do it the first time. I just kind of did whatever the fuck I wanted anyway. And then I got radicalized. Good work, World Economic Forum. If it weren't for you, Liberty Radio would not exist today. You know, there's still a, still a burning question in my mind. When you tell everyone to shelter in place, what if you don't have any shelter? You just in place then? Just stay where you're at, homeless people. Well, no, that didn't even work. In nope. fact, again, work. back to the return of our owner, Winnie the the ping pong poo from his honeypot <laughs> in Beijing, and he comes over and poof all the fucking 
unhoused masses yeah. vanish and their poop too. And where did the fucking go? Where are they? I, I, I started looking into it. Nobody knows. Yeah, because exactly. apparently the reason why nobody knows. That's why I apathy, asked the question. Apathy. Every person that's written an article about it didn't look into it, didn't fucking care. They're gone and we're glad. Who cares? Yeah. That's been the consensus in three different articles now. I'm so disappointed in you, Alameda County. I would have thought the, the, the poorer side of the bay would care about the poor. But no. Really? But no. Oakland's down over there, Ben. Come on. Down the memory hole. It, it doesn't matter if you're in Daly City or Palo Welcome, Alto. Welcome, sir. Oakland. It's so sad, Danny. As one who was born in Kaiser Memorial Hospital, Oakland, California, I can say, what are you talking about? Down the memory hole, sir. You know, honestly, I can't. It's not all bad. Oakland is probably the best place ever to park a barely running um, recreational vehicle on the curb and live there for the next few years, like the other thousands that do. This is a true statement. <laughs> so wait, are you or saying you I should be in Oakland? Oakland? You need an no, RV. No, you need an RV. If you want to get splashed, that's a new a new English term. <laughs> Shout out to my good friend OG Demon over there on the east side of Oakland there in Alameda, where, where they'd be ripping up the roads at night with their impromptu um, lowrider meets and doing spin outs and shit in the streets. As featured in numerous DJ Hyona videos, like the Too Short remix, A La Di Gotti, like the music video for Capital Estocracy, the first one. Because uh, the the remix with Dead Fellow features uh, Tony Myers' favorite street in Philadelphia, <laughs> Kensington Avenue. Anyways, <laughs> so what's on your mind tonight, Daniel? <clears throat> well, actually, I uh, had to stop something I was working on. I was actually going to test the algorithms. The irony of your conversation is, I was listening to last week's Grand Theft World. And uh, I, I'm going through it slower than I am previously because of the new job I'm in. But I finally made it to the part where they got into um, Tim Cast covering the Elon Musk lawsuit over Media Matters. And then Grove pulls out the brain model and does like, you know, five, ten minute dive on that. And kind of like for the normie, it's like the perfect brain melter. And so I'm like, wow, I wonder if I can chop this up into 60 seconds like can i grab the best of these things and make it make sense in 60 seconds and test the algorithm on youtube because i got a channel that has never got a hit and i'm not so sure they're going to mess with shorts because the shorts nowadays like i put up some of my content for hemp and cannabis and yeah. it goes up as a, a full frame video clip and it gets blocked you know 18 or over content and it's just mentioning cbd <laughs> and then i'll take that same content and just reformat it to vertical video make it less than 60 seconds and it runs as a short and there's no age restrictions. So I think there's something with about the shorts that they are less strict. So I wanted to take this clip because it's like, you could easily, easily title it Elon Musk or uh, Tim Cass and Elon massive lawsuit. So it's a kind of title that might get a couple hits. And if the whole time the video is playing, you're seeing yeah. Grand Theft World episode 160, people are going, what the fuck's Grand Theft World? And then if they go to the description, I could throw the affiliate link to the brain model and then affiliate link yeah. to the show. And, uh, you know, maybe some people can get their brain melted and dig into it. Yeah, that'd it be is, awesome. It is true. It is true. Like, for example, the two most viral uh, pieces of content that I've ever put up on YouTube, for example, were when I put songs uh, into YouTube shorts format of 90 seconds clips or, or shorter uh i'm referring to the song uh non-playable character anthem or npc anthem um with the uh robot chorus <coughs> uh, i'm the happiest slave um and then <laughs> and then the other one of course was um fart noise <laughs> i pooped oh, on yeah. myself yeah. uh because those you know 
I pooped on myself did go viral as a regular full length video on YouTube for about 32 hours. Did and it, it really? raced, it raced all the way up to 800 views in 32 hours and then stopped on a dime. <sighs> Never gotten another view ever since, which is yep. just impossible. Right. You know that you should go take that back and use it to remix some content of the San Francisco poop missing poop. And you can yeah. use that song as like the background sound like there's the poop. Oh, where did it go? Yep. Oh, I love San Francisco. Yep. Yep. It, for, because the shorts, I guess, are subjected to a different algorithm or something yeah. than the than the long form content. Uh, it's all well, I can they, to do. They want people watching those. So they they haven't been putting as many restrictions on them. Uh, I did hear, though, I think it was through Reclaim the Net, if I'm not mistaken, that YouTube is going to look at putting more restrictions on the shorts now. That Apparently, now that they're wildly successful, it's time to rein them in. Then it'll be 30 seconds. And then we're back to Google Video in 1999. <laughs> yeah, and eventually we'll get all the way back to Vine at six seconds. But it'll take us another decade. Ain't progress awesome? It's dang great. The, the best part about six-second Vine videos is I can fit them onto one five-and-a-quarter-inch floppy disk. It does make it convenient for transferring files, hard copies, hard copy floppy. That's right. Learn basic code, kiddos, and Morse code. Telegraphers make good money. It's almost as much as someone that can weave buggy whips. Don't let the world outpace them. So how cold is it up north right now? Oh, is oh I got up into the twenties earlier this week, Fahrenheit, and uh, but now it's like upper thirties. I think the next couple of days are high as forty three. Oh, wow. winter set in early. There was some real cold days. Uh, <clears throat> someone I knew spun out on some glazed ice really early in the year, but it was like that one of those mornings where there was like mist and dew, and then the wind <laughs> dropped below thirty two, and then the railroads were already wet and froze glaze, and into the ditch you go. Yep. That's why you. That's why you said you want to stop shoveling. I hope you're not going to shovel this winter. I hope I'm not either. I don't. I don't think we should. Uh, that's good I don't know. want to tempt fate, though. So I'm. I. I got my shovels out of the garage already. I know it's coming. Bag of salt too. Yeah, I think uh, Mid Atlantic and Northeast probably going to have uh, pretty good snow this year. They seem to hit him with those uh, natural storms a lot. You know, ice, the Arctic cyclone of death. I remember they keep giving them these great names. It's like Edward Bernays is at the weather station naming the storms and shit. <laughs> Was it the Arctic blast? They got names for these storms. Something you know? like that. Yeah. Well, they decided, what was it like? I don't know, 10 years ago or something. They're like, oh, well, now we have to start naming the storms in the winter too, because like it'll yeah. just increase the anxiety. Yeah. And, and, Thanks to this weird El Nino pattern we've got coming out of the Pacific, there it's we're basically dealing with a constantly split polar vortex. So we've got the normal port, mm. we've got the normal northerly track of a polar vortex, and then there's like a polar vortexus, we'll call it, which is cutting right through the fucking big bend of Texas almost constantly. <laughs> and and so we're getting this on again, off again, on again, off again, on again, off again pattern east of the Mississippi of uh, heat wave and cold wave, you know. And so the same thing happened when I was uh, delivering in Charleston just the other night where it never was up. It stayed at around maybe 40 for the high, but then it was misty and rainy and very, very foggy that by the time the morning came, uh, the there was frozen the jizzles all over the roads everywhere, yeah. and uh, freezing drizzle is dangerous out there, ladies. Keep oh, it, it can be extremely dangerous. Trust me. Ask some Keep of my thawed. exes. Keep it thawed. Yeah. Keep it moist. Keep it thawed out. Keep it warm. Right. You don't want them to go all Han Solo carbonite. It gets bad. Yeah, it's it's terrible because every time I go on the Weather Channel to see what the patterns are looking like now, 
Uh, it still has the little window up top that shows Acapulco and the current temperature, and it's always like 80-something, and just like, fuck. Yeah. I mean, it made That's it up into dwarf. the 70s today. That was nice. This is the warmest it's been in probably at least a week. But I don't know. This is new for me. I've never lived in Texas before. I don't know what it's supposed to be like. Well, I think water like funds in from your ceiling and then freezes in Texas. Yeah. I remember seeing that in a video once, right? <laughs> You know, fun fact, um, there are actually three electrical grids across all of North America. Yes. There is the eastern grid, which uh, is connected all the way up north, damn near all the way to fucking a cal of it, to the fucking Hydro-Quebec shit up there around those FLQ terrorists speaking their Quebec or French. Uh, and then you've got the west coast. Uh, which, you know, stretches from B.C., uh, fucking A. Wrights there, bud, all the way down to uh, T.J. Mm -hmm. And then there's the third one, which is Texas, mm -hmm. all by itself. Although, Which is itself speaking, then subdivided within the state of Texas. Technically yeah. speaking, there is a tiny little part over uh, by... Uh, um, what is it Fort Bliss, El Paso, mm -hmm. uh, which is on the New Mexico grid, and then there's a little part over by like uh, Texarkana, just okay. the the far eastern part of Texas that's actually on the eastern grid. But the rest of Texas is separate grids yeah. within separated grids because everything's bigger right. in Texas, especially the libertarianism. So you can have a an oil refinery, an elementary school, uh, a bakery, and a dairy all on the same street with no sidewalk. Oh, hell, you curb. can do that in Los Angeles. But, you know, it's... <laughs> no a, zoning. Right. You know, <laughs> it's a good thing, though, that Texas has its own separate power grid because, uh, check this out, from the Texas nationalist movement, uh, and this was actually, it looks like it was printed in Newsweek. I'm looking at the Liberty Radio Telegram channel for uh, those who are curious. But it is dated December 1st, 2023 at 2.50 p.m. Eastern Time. Oh, that's today. That is today. The Texas Nationalist Movement has gotten the 100,000 signatures needed to put a secession referendum on the Republican ballot this spring. Secession just took a major step forward. All right. You well, you know, first here on Liberty Radio, folks. You know, um, it is called the Lone Star State because uh -huh. it Texas... might be the Lone Star Country soon. <laughs> well, I could be down with that. It was the Republic of Texas Dirty before. Yeah. In fact, that's in like fact, all Civil when, War era and shit. I could do that. When Texas was an independent nation, it had diplomatic relations yeah. with foreign countries. And in fact, the Texas Embassy building, still in Paris, still intact. Same thing uh, in London, the Texas Embassy building, because Texas was a whole last sovereign nation the republic of texas with its lone star after it seceded from uh the mexican state of uh Tejasi, Coahuila, uh and before it was ultimately accepted into statehood um shout out to uh president james polk polk war was he a texan mexican american war uh no no, um, but, you know, the, the, the whole issue was the fact that the United States and Mexico had agreed that the Nueces River was the border between the independent Texas and the rest of Mexico, which, uh, it, you know, meets the Gulf of Mexico at Corpus Christi, the Nueces River. But the U.S. troops instead decided to march across the Nueces all the way down to 
the far bank of the Rio de los Bravos, or as we call Rio Grande, mm-hmm. uh, and and build their little log fort, Texas, there. Yeah. Uh, and began Brownsville, essentially. Sh- uh, right, Brownsville. Uh, and they began shelling uh, Matamoros in uh, Tamaulipas State, right across the river there. Uh, uh, and then they invaded in their um, green uniforms. And so the people in Matamoros kept telling the American soldiers, green, go away, uh, when they marched over from Fort Texas. And they were told, greens, go away, green, go away. And mm-hmm. hence the term for Americans gringo. Was born, gringo. Yeah. That's what it comes from. No shit. Real story. True story. Fact check a young. <laughs> Yeah, and so here we are, and it's it's coming full circle. You know, the there's an amusement park company across the country now, known as Six Flags Amusement Parks, and the first Six Flags over Texas was Astro World in Houston, which sadly is no more. Um, but Six Flags over Texas was the original amusement park because mm-hmm. there were six flags over Texas, right? How you figure? Mexico, Mexico, Spain, France, Texas, under its own flag, and, lest we forget, United States. Well, that's only five. Did I leave one out? Yeah. Left two out. So it was under the... what? Okay, Mexico. Yeah, seven flags. Five, six. No, seven. no, no. Oh, six flags. Six <clears throat> flags yeah. over Texas. So let, yeah. let's go again. Uh, let's start with the first flag. Would have been the French flag, and then the Spanish flag, and then the Mexican flag. That's three. Yeah. Oh wait, I am missing one. I ain't. Not. Yeah, I got I got all my fingers. So. It's it's good. Then, we can keep yeah, going. Texas and then you Texas. Texas state flag, U.S. flag was Britain up in that bitch too. So probably that would be six. No. That would be six. I'm sure Britain hmm. was up in that, dude. Come on. They We're got into everything. Memory. What I mean, flag am I missing here, man? <clears throat> Let's see. Live radio, folks. Live. How far away is the nearest search engine from this live show? Oh, I'll just ask Jeeves. <laughs> oh, the one flag I kept leaving out, I had to leave out because it's been canceled, Bo and Luke. Please don't try uh, to generally okay. buy yeah. it. Oh, the races. Tommy Gringere yeah, flag. Yeah, yeah. 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 Stars and bars. I think I, I think if I, you I actually say the, the name of it, like your flag. stream gets cut, like it's that oh, bad I, now. I just fuck up. I, I take I cut that. What did you say it? Yeah. But oh, I, well, I was talking at the same time, so it, more than likely good. the no, AI didn't hear it. it. So yeah, he was talking about space while he was drinking at the bar, so That's it's right. all good. Oh. Yeah. That, we're we have we're having a conversation about stars in the bars, so we're good. It's well, just we're, an American drink. I thought, I thought we were talking about Canada, the Confederacy of Canada, the Confederated Democracy of Canada with the yep, Charter yep. of Rights, eh? That's right. Anyways. Yep, I, that's what I remember. They're provinces. It's a crown colony, folks. Anyways. <laughs> well, I heard uh, old Fudge Trudy said that the conservatives hate Christmas. And want Santa Claus to die or something, something like that. Like it was official on the record in legislature in Canada that the opposition party hated Christmas. It's big news out of Canada today. You Did know, you they guys see that? Had, they have a black Santa festival in a town in the Netherlands where they all put on blackface and dress as Santa Claus. Wait, it's maybe, uh, shit, maybe what's it, what's it called? Something Pete, 
Yeah, yeah, Black Pete. Black Pete. That's right. Black Pete Day. Yeah. That's it. Black yeah. Pete Day. Um, man, we got to get Justin. This video me. just got struck on YouTube. These we go from Confederate. I'm just kidding. Flag. We're not broadcasting on YouTube. Con- it'll go on later, over and then it'll Astral get struck. World in Harris County, Texas, to fucking Black Pete in the fucking Netherlands. All right, what's next? Oh, hey, hey, Yona. Uh, question, <laughs> question from the live stream audience. Uh, can you? Do you believe people are actually watching? Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Then you what's- believe this is a real question. All right. Question from the live stream audience. Uh, this is from uh, She Who Remembers. Was there a native flag before the colonies? Um, hmm. Well, there were native flag poles called, you know, because I told them so. At least that's what they said. Um, but no flags <laughs> on them. Anyways, there's your answer. Well, yeah, that was, they had a, a different method. It wasn't necessarily a flag. Because, you know, in native towns, you know, um, like Cherokee upper towns, middle towns, and lower towns, there would Actually, be you know a, that a would flag be a fascinating pole. research subject. Like, at no what flag. point, at what point... Because the the flag is uh, today we associate it with the nation state primarily, right? Mm-hmm. Every country has its own flag. Yeah, we have our own Cherokee flag now, orange now, flag with seven pointed star. Right. When my the what I think would be interesting to see is when did that uh, when did that start? When did that that uh, association? Uh, begin in each of those uh regions well the Cherokee, it's, it, it began with the indian removal act of 1830 uh the flag and the constitution and all that stuff was adopted there in the 1830s literally we did everything we were told to do to form a legitimate sovereign government yeah. and then argued our case before the supreme court and the supreme court said all right you did everything you're supposed to do and it's illegal and then they just ethnically cleansed and just wiped us out. Right. Anyways, but right. that's when it right. happened. Right. That, that's when it happened. That's right. when it was adopted. Right. Like kind of as a prerequisite. Right. To say that we were a civilized tribe. Right. And <laughs> we have a flag, that, by God. Right. Before that, in Western history, right, it goes back to like the medieval period where it was representative of, you know, whatever authority you had pledged your allegiance to you know, uh, king, country, whatever. But it wasn't necessarily like a universal uh, symbolic form until we get to more modern times where everybody has one, right? You know, there there is an answer to she who remembers this question, though. There was a native flag before colonies, if you consider Lichtensteiners a tribe and natives in their own country, shout out to Badus, because the principality of Liechtenstein is still a sovereign nation. It's a micro nation, albeit. Um, shout out Gargamel and Azrael. Um, that's where they're from, actually. Liechtenstein. Look it up. It's right next to Switzerland. But anyways, um, in Smurfs? Austria. Um, yeah, that's right. Um, there's a lot of mushroom houses there. Shelly knows. Um, but anyways, uh. So Liechtenstein, they've had their same medieval ass fucking barons flag with coat of arms and everything for I don't know over a thousand years. You know, it, it, it's a it's a true back in the it, it Liechtenstein has a day one native flag that pre exists colonies, and it's still sovereign. So uh, tonight we salute you once again. Liechtenstein. Yeah. So Liechtenstein is older than the United States. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Easily. Hmm. What is the oldest country in the world? Do you know? 
Or do we uh, have to uh, consult the AI on the interwebs? I'm going to say Antarctica. Really? Antarctica is the oldest country in the world. Mm. Don't 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 ghost on the penguins. Big mistake. I'm gonna say Malta, but that's just wild guess. Hmm. That would make sense. Well, let's see if it even understands the question first. All right. So uh, okay. this so, is coming from the uh, the aggregator on the brave browser. So, you know, again, <laughs> take it with a grain of salt. Uh, it's hard to imagine how they managed to keep their country intact, though, considering the wars and invasions that have bloodied the lands around them. San Marino is the oldest sovereign state in the world, having been founded in 301 AD but it's also one of the smallest, about 60 square kilometers. So San Marino. Yeah, I was about to say San the, Marino. The, <laughs> sure you were. Well, uh, because the San Marino... country in the world. San Marino is at the headwaters of the Rubicon River, which is a very famous saying about when Caesar crossed the Rubicon and headed up to Venice um, to fight those crazy fucking swamp creatures. Um, and that was right outside the gates of San Marino when he, you know, had to cross the Rubicon and said, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Iaca Galea Est. The die is cast. Shout out, Caesar. Um, so I was looking up some info here. Uh, according to the, um, uh, the, uh, let's see here. In, thir- in the year 1396, Vaduz uh, gained imperial immediacy and became subject to the Holy Roman Emperor alone. Uh, the family from which the principality takes its name originally came from the Liechtensteiner Castle in Lower Austria, which they had possessed since at least 1140. So... Yeah, San Marino is about 800 years older than Liechtenstein. Wow. Sorry, but dudes, suck it. And Although... I, I didn't even know that it existed until today. First San time Marino? I've ever heard of it. You, you didn't know about San Marino? No. Oh, there's more micro nations. There's more. Hmm. There's more. You got San Marino. You got Chita del Vaticano, or Vatican City for the English speaker. Yeah. Um, I'm good. The, re- the the remnant of the paper. I don't states. like little boys. Um, you have... Uh, Mon- well, I thought you sold magazines at one time. I did. You didn't sell Playboys and Alter Boys? No. no, we didn't have Playboy. We didn't have Penthouse. Dude, we would have... If we had, holy shit. Money. Yes. Oh my God. Wow. I mean, we still, there, there were some of us who were able to make a grand a week. Uh, but. You well, know. yeah, you, you could have sold the penthouse letters. They're just sexy Bob Guccione stories. There's no pictures. I mean, take it up with the clearing house, man. They, that was who cleared all the titles. All right. Well, you can't tell me they didn't have Harlequin novels for the housewife. No, no, we didn't. Even, we didn't even have a reader's digest, man. That was that was another one. If we could have gotten that one, could have sold the shit out of it. My God, what are they trying to make you sell? So you're just selling oh, like man. it was news like it was like uh, yeah, U.S. News, Time um, Magazine. Yeah, we ha- did. We have time? No, I don't think we did have time. We had uh, Rolling Stone. We had what? Spin. We had Vibe. BHG. Better. I mean, Better Homes. Yard. We have Better Homes. I think we did have Better Homes. We had um, uh, Ladies Home Journal. Uh, we had Outdoor Woman's Hunter. Day. What's that? Outdoor Hunter. I don't think we had that one. God, man, we're trying to throw you a bone here, Drew. No, no, no. There were some golf, like there were some golf magazines. I think there was like a fishing magazine. Um, like there was a good mix, right? Like if there if there was something somebody wanted that we didn't have, because there was like fifty titles or something. 
Um, so you could kind of go, well, this one's kind of like that. Imagine going door to door this day and age and having to sell <laughs> online. Shot. You'd be trying dead to sell in six months. Would you like to buy an online subscription to our newspaper? Get all the custom New York Times and WAPO content you've been craving. Yeah. No, I was doing, I was like the, uh, <laughs> uh, the, what's his name? Is it Orlando Jones from no. uh, Office Space? Knocks on the door, <laughs> selling the magazines as a, as a recovering crack addict. That wasn't my canvas. That wasn't the spiel that I gave people, but that was, that's basically what I did. Blew me away the first time I saw that. I was like, oh my God, somebody else knows. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, after the second or third customer has gone through the whole list of, well, do you have that? No. And do you have that? No. And do you have that? No. Uh, after the third hard reject, I would probably go see Martinez down at 3rd and D Street and smoke some crap. I'm just... <laughs> Martinez, shit, it's a bomb. <laughs> He got that mean green. <laughs> Let's pause for the cause and the audience. And and you know, um, Martinez knows Jesus, but but he calls him Jesus. Mm. I know Jesus. Right. Yeah. I think he's still alive. I don't know. I haven't heard from him in a while. I still can't get over the Charleston Mall food court where it's like an Epcot center of foreign cultures where they've got the French bistro, the taco place, the Sarku Japan, the Sabaro, you know, which is, you know, the Italian place. And then they've got Allegedly. the Indian, what was it? Shawarm or some shawarma or something. And literally every single one of them cashiers fucking Mexican and the cook Sir Mexican. All of them. Yep. Were we talking about that last night? Yeah, yeah. I, I had a feeling I, like we were. Yeah, yeah. I, I still can't get over it, man. Oh. Like, well, they're good uh, cooks. Because, like, literally up until maybe four years ago, there may have been, between Huntington and Charleston, may have been 10 Mexicans. Yeah. But well, dude, now the, it's like the, everywhere else. One of the pizza joints that I worked at I don't know, 20 years ago now or whatever, uh, they had uh, everybody in the kitchen was ethnic, right? Like the dude that made all the pizzas, and literally he was the dude that made all of the pizzas. Uh, he was Italian from Jersey, and everybody else in the kitchen was Mexican. Like one dude was from Honduras. Another dude was from El Salvador. Uh, I think one, one of the guys actually was from Mexico. Nice. Yeah. Wasn't, wasn't like a, a, a regular American in the bunch and they made some damn good food. You know, I gotta say when it comes to mixing cultures, Nothing touches the heart of Chinese patrons of a hibachi Japanese restaurant than to greet them and speak to them constantly in Tojo Japanese. Shout out oh, Manchuko wow. District. Anyways, uh, and, and special shout out Colonel Ishii. And uh, is it Unit 713? Anyway. 730. 731. Uh, unit, yeah, unit 731. I, I, I got my genocidal unit mixed up there. Yep. It was a good effort, though. I applaud the effort. <laughs> As my dad used to call it, the old meatball flag. <laughs> and if you don't know what the Yona is talking about, it's Unit 731. Search it up. That's right. Colonel Ishii. Or Ishii. However you want to say it. <laughs> He'll torture you. He don't matter. It don't matter. Um, <laughs> ask, ask Colonel Ishii about his mouth vagina, and anus tattoo machine. All at the same time? Well, no, you have to, I mean, <laughs> it's a three-car garage, but you've only got one car uh, drizzle, so you're going to have to pull it and back out. What, you know, 
or or you could well I, maybe on the bottom you could double park probably but you know japanese cars are really small yeah you'd say fucking clown car i think that <laughs> one definitely get us kicked off of youtube i kicked All off right. youtube this reminds me of when Kurt Metzger was on Grand Theft World the other week and talking about his childhood and being at a friend's house and he was forced with the charge penis, butt, or leave. <laughs> that was a, a very famous line from Grand Theft World. Definitely yeah. worthy of getting kicked off for that line. Kurt's just dropped it heavy. <laughs> and and that's why we call him Kurt. Mm, not bad manners, good food. Kurt. Oh, Kirk. I'd love him. How many other shows would have had the guts to air that? Seriously, though. <laughs> Negative pie. Yeah. Well, I mean, they, they've they been riding the, the take it joke for like a while. So it was about time for a refresher, I think. Penis butt or leave forever, as far as I'm concerned. I, I, I'm not sure if LD made a soundbar for it, but that would be a good one to have on the button. Just drop that every once in a while. That would. And then maybe a, like a, a, a pre-recorded laugh from um, Jimmy Dorio to follow it up. <laughs> uh, oh, and you know, Drizzle, I've noticed I, I've been getting into the metrics on, you know, crowd response. And then Dead Bill has been doing me screenshots of all the different songs that he's put up. Uh and the response, um, and you know, essence and road rage and spiritual warfare, just killing it on the metrics. And, and, you know, I, I, I just, you know, he's really been getting into this stuff. And I noticed from my end, it's my like acoustic, just piano songs with singing that's really taken off. And so, uh, hmm. I've got like what I think are like the, that actually best. surprises me. You know, I've got the 12 best acoustic songs lined up for an album, and I finally figured out the perfect album name for my acoustic album. Hmm. Because it's just piano and singing. I can call it Pianist and Mouth. <laughs> well, checking in on the live stream for the first time uh, is the one and only... The mythological LD pilot right of the cue. mothership. Yeah. yeah. LD says, says peanuts, butter, leaves. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Couldn't get any warts. Nice. What up, LD? Yeah. What's happening, my man? Hope you are staying warm up there in the Northwest. I hope that cured out nicely and everything's ready to roast. You know, uh, we were talking the other night about having a get together, all the interwebs here on our right. uh, Friday night show, the Friday before this Christmas Monday. Yeah. Uh, and doing like a little um, Grand Theft World shindig. Yeah. Uh, I think that's actually a, a good idea. Instead of online Christmas instead of party open day. lines, it should be uh, the, the Grand Theft World. Uh, I don't know, holiday uh, cocktail party. Uh, yeah, yeah, something like that. The virtual cocktail party. You know, yeah. and, and, you, as the Yona would say, it's time to lay down a good Yuletide log. That's poop. Yeah. So, do we what holiday or year end? What do we want to do? Because Grand Solstice? Theft World is a time capsule, right? Yeah. I would go with Solstice then. I like Daniel's situation. Solstice special. Yeah. I don't know what. To, let's see. Will it be? Where is my? Let's home? keep. Let, let's keep it astronomical. You know what well, I mean. Will that it's, actually it's like, be the twenty first? No, it's like an approaching. You know, I mean, it's like the upcoming event. We're kind of doing it ahead yeah. of the holidays because everyone's. I mean, obviously, everyone's traveling. It's the hardest time to meet people together. Or I know. Do, I just threw it out there. We could do like. <clears throat> Saturnalia, taking it heavy, yeah, I don't know. yeah. Saturnalia solstice. Boom. There's your alliteration. Yeah, we'll do something. 
ooh, that means I've got to find me a Saturnalian shirt with the foamy e Paulettes and everything. Hmm. And that'll actually be that'll be the last Friday that we broadcast in two thousand twenty-three. I'm gonna have to change my camera angle so you can see my cummerbund. Otherwise, what's the point of wearing the e Paulette? Keep if it you don't catch? family friendly, Yona. Uh, you know, cummerbund and e Paulettes is classy, especially with you know cloth gloves. We're all about class. Hmm. Well, it's a uh, Toyota with the lower cast. Am I right? Yeah. So, are you are you regular on Monday now? Yep. All right. Yeah, I, I'm. Uh, I've added fiber to my diet again, and so I'm able to regularly <laughs> produce on Monday. That's poop. I mean, you know, week after week, episode after episode, I just keep minting these fucking slogans and stinging one-liners and uh that's why grand theft world loves it. yeah the the yona never fails to deliver fresh puns from the oven i'm gonna fix this chair one day i don't know how but i'll fix it good and just remember you christmas travelers ayn rand mcnally road atlas thug there you go Controlling where you go by telling you where there is to go. That's right. And and you know, Ayn Rand tried to trick me. She was drowning and asked me for a handout. I kept my foot on her head. I won. <laughs> Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Ayn Rand, didn't she smoke? I'm sure. Yeah, that was oh. the era of, of um, Liberty Sticks. Yeah, she was a big smoker. She 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 was a liberty torchbearer, possibly a paid torchbearer. Hmm. You well, know, I, I mean, it would make sense. She ran in those circles. They've had, you know, they they continue to have redneck Olympics, but I don't think everyone has actually gone with the whole liberty torch of passing uh, an eternally burning cigarette. From one redneck to the next, I need to make that happen. Now, in in retrospect of the cigarette conversation, I have to just have words so my microphone recognizes beautiful Joe. Say hello, Joe. <laughs> oh. Smoky Joe. He was definitely not referencing any type of human relations on his face. Just the camel. Joe Camel was the first. To be canceled by cancel folks. Wow. I wonder if I can still find those images easily on the internet. You, or wait, wait a second. Was you it? Can. Weren't, weren't um, blackface minstrel shows canceled before that, though? I mean, Al Jolson and all that, that's canceled too, right? Yeah. No, I'm referring to Joe Campbell being pulled off the market because there was a hot pursuit over illegal subliminal. Mm -hmm. yeah oh, I, remember. I remember yeah yeah <laughs> and there was this was around the time the stuff was going on relative to the film insider that was made after the fact congressional yeah. hearings and well i had no idea nicotine was addictive it has just uh you know tomato sauce and and shout out to a, a good fellow louisvillian of mine jeffrey wiggins <laughs> mr wigan wigan the whistleblower you know i really I, hate the brave browser sometimes i miss my joe camel pool table ashtray that was so fucking cool oh joe dude camel. i had i had all kinds of shit from camel, joe camel beer koozie oh yeah and i used to have all kinds had, of marble gear uh, too i had the darts I had uh, I got the the eight ball Zippo. You remember that one? It came yeah. in the tin. Um, All that stuff is hot reselling right now. If you go like I believe search it. retro item resale stuff, that is like mega. People love that crap. It's weird. I, I'd love to see the meme of King Kong just beating up the fucking twin towers. 
with Larry Silverstein in one hand as his damn swim distress. <laughs> Love to see that. We can make that happen thanks to AI. Definitely. We get animated and everything. This one's kind of cut off short. There's like there's two good year blimps in this one. This is this is with the corporate advertising, like a good NFL game. You got the two corporate blimps in there. One of my dad's collages. That's also what I had on earlier is the the bloody bush face. Yeah. Uh also my father's collage. You know. There it is, folks. Merc. Her- Harold and Kumar. <laughs> sit the fuck down and smoke my fucking weed. Oh, wait, Dick Cheney's coming. Come on, let's go hide. Yeah, Dick Cheney's got a shotgun in his arms. Yeah, he'll shoot you right in the face. <laughs> Don't go hunting in Texas with Dick Cheney. Word to the wise. Don't go hunting in any state with Dick Cheney. Damn. Like, so, if Cheney and guns are involved, just turn and go in the opposite direction. You know, honestly, if I had to guess who is actually running the empire right now i'm going to say idaho's dick robo dick chain isn't he an idaho owen <laughs> idaho no idaho? wyoming wyoming oh oh that's right wow he's in jackson's butthole that's, that's right. right that's that's right with shout his out, mechanical shout out to- heart Yellowstone. Yeah, his cold mechanical heart. Because remember, he got it replaced when he was in office. I mean, he, he he's literally halfway toward being fucking Anakin Skywalker. Kind of. And shout out to Death to Tyrants for posting on the Telegram, I think it was on the AM Wake Up, the glorious rap battle between Darth Vader and Hitler. One of the most epic rat battles of all time. Oh, wow. Who won? Um, the audience. The correct answer is the audience. The Ranker Pit one. Oh, yeah. oh really? The oh, Ranker wow. Pit. Because, you know, Darth was standing on top of the Ranker Pit. Yeah. And, uh, not only did Hitler win, he escaped in a U-boat to Argentina. And now who's now who won in Argentina? Now listen to that guy. Talk. Anyway. Yeah. For those that don't know, fun fact, um, Argentina had the second largest Nazi party on earth right after some country in Europe. Germany. I, I still don't understand the... Um... The Javier Malay idolization by uh, people in America. Can somebody explain that to me? Oh, easy. Two words. The hair. Man, he's got a glorious head of hair. That can't be it. It just oh, can't and, be and, it. And does, have you seen the fucking translations of what he's saying? Fucking yes. shit lips, fucking shit lips. I mean, he's dropped more f bombs than Doctor Shiva. Hmm. So shout out uh, Doctor Shiva Ayurdai. She who remembers, positing the question, maybe Kissinger death will trigger a battle for a new boss. I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, Eric Schmidt was already uh, set up in the line of succession to take over uh, whenever Kissinger decided that it was time to go. And, I second that. Yeah. Well, it's obvious. Like I said, I, I read their book, the one that they co-authored not three years ago or allegedly co-authored. Um, I know, I know Kissinger specifically wrote, two of the chapters because they don't sound like any of the other chapters in the book. But yeah, it, like I could, I could see just reading through that. I was like, Oh, they're just like piggybacking on what it, uh, each other says and, and, you know, confirming each other's suppositions. Like it's obvious. And especially with uh, Schmidt 
spending all of his time focused uh, basically on AI at this point. Like, it's it's no brainer. Like if you look at the the federal government uh, forty years ago, uh, fifty years ago, forty fifty years ago, maybe even thirty years ago. Uh, like the one common denominator that ran through the entire federal government was Henry Kissinger. You look at it today, the one common thread is Eric Schmidt. So I mean, he's it's the power like, strip. Yeah. What what more evidence do you need? If you need to get plugged in, you plug into the power strip. That's Eric Schmidt. It's not what you know until you know. So are you plugged in or no? Does Grand anyone Theft remember? War? The film, The Forecaster, about the uh, U.S. billion dollar financial advisor who created a computer based model that forecasted events. And then eventually, allegedly, <clears throat> it became government property. No, I'm not familiar movie, with I, it. I, I'd like to watch that. And shout out to LD's comment in the chat there BlackRock's 50 trillion under management allegedly is. Potentially, boss, and and we'll clearly, um, Black Rocks matter. I mean, Cyber Polygon's not over yet, so it's still in play. It could just get wiped off the table. Just wait till event two hundred two. <laughs> I mean, they're meeting right now to decide how much meat we get to eat for the rest of our lives. Essentially, according to them. Do cricket chitons count as meat? No. Red Go meat. Go fry a chiton. Yeah, there's an, there's another slogan for tonight. Go fry a chiton. Yeah, they're in uh, Dubai right now at COP28. And the theme is uh, that we need to stop all of the pollution that's being caused by industrial farming. And by industrial farming, they're specifically speaking about like cows, chickens, and pigs. Not like the GMO crap that they keep wanting to force ever down everybody's throat. Right, because rich people are going to stop eating bacon and steaks too. Or no, I guess there'll be more for them to eat. Surely they're not going to do away with all the yummy food uh, are we turning into the soylent green movie in real life yeah feels like well in california they already have a law on the books where you can be composted after you that's die. right biomass yeah, yeah. Uh, ld reminds us that you know it's joe biden's america joe biden wants to take your meat so you better find a hiding spot that he can't reach I really do have to give my hats off to Dubai. Somebody better and, clip uh, that because I got it out clean. That doesn't you know, happen 100% of the time. That's a tricky line to say. Right? But, but you know, uh, I got to give a shout out to Al Emirat Al Mutahad Al Arabian or the United Arab Emirates, UAE, uh, because Dubai is a part of the UAE um, with the main festivals there in Abu Dhabi. But, um, they just completed their Etihad Railway, a standard gauge railway uh, that now connects every part of the Emirates, including Dubai. Uh, they've built several subways in Dubai. You know, you've got the Burj Khalifa and other amazing things. They built all these artificial islands. That some of those have turned out good, sort of. And then there's Palm Jubilee. But um, anyways. I just got to hand it to Dubai that they finally, what was it now? Two years ago, they finally decided to build their first sewage treatment plant in Dubai and stop relying entirely upon a convoy of over 16,000 poop trucks to drain the poop from every single building in Dubai and truck it out to a, a big poop lake that they were making every day in the middle of the desert. Um, I'm sensing so, a theme tonight. Way to go, Dubai. To finally see. 
You know, they, they eventually at the very last, the last thing they got to, you know, maybe we should build a sewage treatment plant. We've got all these subways, freeways, shopping malls and everything. And we've got this fleet of over 16,000 fucking septic semi trucks hauling shit all over our roads every day. Maybe there's a better way. Maybe. And there's still a bunch of buildings that get serviced every day. That's poop. So, moving on. Shout out to you. Bye. Just when you flush, you wonder. Where's it going? I've never wondered where it went. I just want it to go away. Glad when it leaves and doesn't come back. And and that brings us to tonight's S A T A C T vocabulary word. Uh oh. Flocculation. Flocculation. Uh like a flocculation tank at the sewage treatment plant. It's a big metal comb that stirs the poop so that it separates it. Um think of it as uh, fifty shades of gray water, Chris. Um, anyway. I'm speechless. It's all facts. <laughs> Shit happens, and, and then they treat it. There you go. All right, so is this when we start talking <laughs> about Bill Gates then? Yes, yes. Flocculation yeah. leads right to the Global Alliance for Vaccination and Immunization. It does. In fact, they test poop for Ronas and everything else, allegedly. And you don't, you don't believe their shit numbers? They, they they got those numbers from the shit. Weird weird possibility that there's some higher upper in the world that is obsessed with the smell of poopy butt and collected those Q tips. That's right. The higher power can smell higher up. I mean, look, look at who's ruling the country. Literally, a glorious sniffer in chief. It's possible. Big nose. I mean, you know, if he's peddling through the park and he falls over on his bicycle and gets conked out, just snatch a newborn, stick it right under his nose. It's like smelling salts. One whiff of that baby, bam, he's back up on his feet and the hairs on his legs are sticking out again. Whoa, Nelly. Come at me, you dog-faced pony soldier. <coughs> hey, hey, fat so you want to go outside and do some push-ups with me? Whoa, 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 whoa. Biden, twenty twenty four. He's 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 running again, folks. Y'all can't see it, but Briar Rose is freaking the fuck out. Yeah, we got to get off Biden. Yeah, we're, I don't we're be in Biden. full and he loves on psychosis we're on Biden. mode at the moment. There's got to be somebody Spins else. and jumping been. jacks and all sorts of shit. Say what? Thank I was thinking there's somebody else that we could offend that we haven't offended yet. Oh, I'm sure there's all kinds of people. I'm still waiting mm -hmm. for somebody to get triggered from what I said last night. I guess it'll probably be a while. Wait for it. Yeah. Wait for it. It'll be a delayed response. Kind of, kind of like when you put out the piece that was a little bit negative against that new song, Rage, from the Appalachian Mountains. Mm-hmm. Yes, I know. Uh, that, I it, it just crossed response, my mind. Though. I was surprised. It almost slipped away, but thank God I remembered. Fucking kiwis, supposed to be one of the five eyes, New Zealanders, always standing at the UN boats with Israel. Always, come on, Christchurch. What the fuck, man? Canada, England, United States, Australia, down for the count. It's, it's, it's genocide or die, right or die, bitches. Where the fuck are you at, New Zealand? Abstaining. Abstaining. You didn't see powwow or fucking micro-fucking-nesia abstaining. What the fuck's wrong with you, New Zealand? Over there doing your haka dance. 
and sleeping on Israel. Now Israel's even more isolated. So is there problems in the five eyes now? Bruh. I mean, is New Zealand really like a world player? Are they that important? Because I don't remember, gonna... like, back in the 90s, anybody was talking about New Zealand and, like, how important they were to global security. Well, now that they're not, you know, now that New Zealand... I always thought it was, like, you. us, Russia, China, uh, uh, France, for some reason. Grizzle, this is a crisis. New Zealand is clearly an anti-Semitic archipelago. That we must invade and occupy uh -huh. immediately. And they're taunting us with their haka dances. Haven't you seen them sticking their tongues out, beating on their chest? I thought that's Kiwi. what the kids were doing nowadays. Dissension in the ranks. And, and five eyes became four eyes. It's just like Uncle Sam is wearing a pair of glasses now. Yeah. Is actually uh, catching it from behind. It's an Anglo-American partnership. Wouldn't that the, be the, interesting? The British though. pitch and we catch. There you go. Wouldn't Wouldn't that be interesting if New Zealand decides to go off and just partner with China and Russia? Just like fuck you. But After we were so nice to Jacinda, we gave her that degree at where That's Harvard right. or Yale or someplace. That's right. I forgot. Like, they're, they're New Zealand that, is yeah, super tight that paid with China. Like a quarter of a million dollars for one of those, and they just gave her one. I mean, See, Australia, nice. the Aussies, you know, Canberra keeps constant middle fingers to the Chinese, but not New Zealand. Not New Zealand. And, and New Zealand has warm relations with Russia. It's already happening. Now it makes sense. And, and, and it's just more, it, it, where did they go wrong? Hmm. I, I Again, I blame the hockey. Science for all this. Literally mocking, sticking the tongue out, beating on the chest, and, and, and got all the honkies doing the honky hockey dance. Too. I mean, that that's a special type of cultural appropriation when you can get all of the Absolute. Get the white it's people just dancing. You know, it's like that moment when George W. Bush was doing his African dance. You know, and he does the thing with the. Hand. That, 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 I don't that. remember seeing that. George W. Bush on stage with the African uh, drummers and everything, and he starts doing the cha cha with his hands. Da, uh, da, and the da, da, da. Oh, Daniel, back be me on up. on YouTube, right? Back me up, Daniel. George W. Bush. I'm trying to. I'm trying dance. to search it right now. I'm trying to search it right now. I can't remember it offhand. <laughs> Laura's up there too. Come on, Brent. All right. So I got George W. Bush with the Kankaran West African Dance Company. That's it. That's that is it. it. All right. That's it. Me. Roll. Roll that beautiful bean footage. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, where do we need to go? Uh, so fucking high. Holy this, shit, I found it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got it too. It's, I'm just high. It's, <laughs> it's like late in the show. All right. There it go. is. Here there it go. is. All right. I want to dance with them. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, sound is really low. I guess it doesn't really matter, though. Are they just going to stand there? Oh, no. Oh, no. The, first the music, then the dancing. All right, let's get this party started. Are you ready? All right, here we go. Are you ready for this, Chris?
Yes! I think I think we might have to put this in the reel for Saturday night. Yeah. I mean he's hitting that drum like he would yeah. if he was on Epstein Island. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Just think that one of those hands jacked off in wow. front of his dad at Yale University. Shout out New Haven, Connecticut. Well, yeah, but it was easier than the time in the coffin with his buddy. True. <laughs> but yeah, you like wow. yeah, it, it, leave it to the Yona to to bring back the George W. Bush African cha cha moves. Yeah, I can I can uh, cha cha. I forget that up, nothing. Put it into the next edition. Got the memory of a fucking elephant up here. That'd be good to remix over like some good house music and then just have them going back and forth, you know, with the boogie choo choo cha cha. Yeah, I will definitely put that in a music video. I think, yes. it, yeah, it's definitely time to make another African song. Yeah. And clearly, this is like time, a West African rhythm. We're going with Gabon. Gabon. Which, uh, for those that aren't have, aware, is a country. They have snakes. Yes. Yeah. The I viper, thought. right? That's right. Yeah. I remember that Japanese from viper. being a little, little kid. They're like, you want to watch out for those snakes because they will fuck you up. Gabonese viper. Libreville yeah. is the capital yeah. there. It's 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 next to... Because well, really, Gabon was part of the Kikongo Kingdom. Uh, and you saw, you know... Brazzaville and Libreville and Leopoldville, which is now known as uh, Kinshasa, all peeled off and split up by King Leopold I of Belgium because uh, uh, I'm going to say 25 or 22 million or somewhere around there, um, Congolese were just genocided. Uh, by the Belgians. Uh, most of them uh, worked to death in forced labor. Um, and I do have a music video and a song I made about it, uh, which features the oldest existing movie ever filmed that's kept at the uh, records repository at the University of Leuven or University of Louvain, uh, just south of Brussels in Belgium. Mm. <laughs> and it's like a uh, Silent black and white film from 1904 or something called um, The Railroad from Boma to uh, Thiel. Uh, and, uh, and that's my song called Boma Boma, uh, which features that black and white video. And in the video, you constantly see that the mine carts and everything being pushed up and down the rails are powered by children pushing the mine carts on a little footpath next to the rails and the, hmm. uh, what do you call the things? And well, they didn't call them railroad ties; they call them some sleepers. Yeah. Hmm. When was the footage taken? Uh, oh, I can share links here, can I? I think should be able to. Just drop them in the chat. Chat. Not on okay. the Zoom chat, but on the on the Odyssey channel. Oh, okay. I'll put the link over there. Yeah. Let let's let let's pull that up. Speaking of which, because to me, honestly, if I had to guess where the next super hot war is gonna be, I think they're gonna put off Taiwan. Uh I think they're gonna back away from China and Let's go fuck shit up in Africa hardcore because they're really getting out of hand. We're gonna have to put smack. Oh yeah, well that that's on the that's on the the agenda anyway. They were I mean, I do can literally anyway. hear the knuckles popping from the French foreign legionnaires ready to go back into Abidjan and kick some fucking ass. Well, they've got all kinds of new reasons to go back to Africa. Like, there's all these new minerals that they can now go in and, and mine. And, and you know, you the, the French froggies. The locals and all that good stuff. French froggies are big on nukies. They got to get their uraniums from somewhere, buddy. Yeah. 
shit just don't grow on the fucking banks of the sand. You know, you gotta dig it around somewhere. Yeah. And I mean, somebody's going to have to provide the food for the industrial uh, uh, nation of China and India as well. Where else is it going to come? Ain't coming from Ukraine. So it's going to have to come from Africa. You know, it's the US is getting shame. fucked up right now. They had the Communitaire Financière Africaine Franc, or the CFA Franc, as a common European-controlled central bank currency uh, for the majority of all of West Africa. What, what, mm-hmm. 12 different countries. Um, and one by one by one, they're all fucking dumping it, which, you know, Gaddafi was trying to get him to do is he was talking about a, a gold backed African sovereign currency. Um, and uh, as uh, Bill Gates famo- famously said one time, well, <laughs> he's dead, so there's that. Um, no, I think that was Epstein, not Gaddafi. No, no, I'm, I was quoting Bill Gates, oh. who was actually talking about Epstein in that regard, but I was referring to. Gaddafi, who well, he's I think dead. uh Hillary had some good good one liners about Gaddafi because she was a real piece of shit to him. Yeah, we, also, we, we came, we saw he died. <laughs> that's the one. Yep, that's the one. But he was doing some pretty amazing shit with technology that's supposed to be suppressed, like what he did with water. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah the, was... the 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 great uh river of the desert, and you know tapping into that aquifer. Just amazing, yeah. And of course, that's that's the very first thing that NATO uh, airstrikes hit was the pumping stations for the water, immediately interrupting water flow to uh, the eastern region, particularly around uh, uh, you know El Alamein and uh, Benghazi and stuff, which is where uh, Ambassador Christopher Stevens was killed and in the lead up to all that it's a just invaded <laughs> uh where is this? oh you there's you're the b1 shout out b1 where's b1 uh, oh I, i've seen him in my playlist here so oh, nice digging through I've, I've uploaded so many fucking songs on rumble now there's like 15 pages I didn't think it was that deep into the pile. Um, All right. This is the two minute warning. Jesus Christ. Two minutes oh, till the there's top the, of the one hour. with the. Um, that was. Oh, there it is. Boom, boom, boom. Found it. And link. Oh, Did you freeze? And paste into the audio. What the hell just happened? All right. Was that one of those solar flares? That happened here, too. Hmm. All right. So there it is in the live stream chat on Odyssey. Boma Boom. There you go. Uh, It's now everybody listening on a platform other than Odyssey has to go to the Odyssey live stream chat to get it. Uh Aha. That's how we roll. Okay. Everything yeah, so, is a breadcrumb trail. Boma Capital du Congo Belge. All right. Uh, what was that? That had a good beat. Yeah, yeah. You put put it on the thing or just play the just play the first like uh twenty oh, yeah. seconds. Oh yeah. And you'll get a, a look at I'll get a copyright strike. No, the, 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 uh, I was able to use this video because it's the first video ever made and it's in the comments. Oh, yeah. That's a good way to end the show. What about that video, Driz? 
That's nice. I mean, as we've discussed on Grand Theft World, they they plotted out Africa being split up between the different assholes in Europe, and then they plowed in and plundered like a motherfucker, building railroads everywhere by hand with children.